today. Of course, this goes without saying, do you know what day it is? Oh, come on. We can do a little bit better than that, can't we? I think I heard the people on TV say it louder than that. Do you know what day it is? Yes, we do. It is Resurrection Sunday. Let's not get tied up in the whole, well, it maybe it wasn't that exact. Let's forget about that. Let's just realize what this day means. It means despite all the stuff that we go through, despite all the stuff that we're dealing with, it means we have a savior that we can't go to a tomb and find. We can't go find his body buried somewhere. We can't go to this place and say, okay, he's buried here. No, our God is risen. Come on. I don't think you heard me. Our God is risen. That is so significant when we stop and think about all the stuff that we have to deal with, all the things that we deal with in life, the fact that they are just temporary. Why? Because he's, he told us, he said, I go, to a, I go to prepare a place. And then not only is he going to prepare a place, he paved the way and made a way for us to get there. And it's all through the blood of Jesus and through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He paid the price and he resurrected. When they went to that tomb, they found nothing there. And he says, I don't know who you, you know, the Lou version, angels like, I don't know who you're looking for. He's not here. He's not here. The stuff that we deal with stays here. Yeah, come on. But we have a promise and an eternity in heaven paved by the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ that sets us apart. That God said, you know what? I know your humanity. I know the stuff you're going to have to deal with. But I'm still, I'm going to make a way for you to get out. I'm going to make a way that's going to make all that disappear. And there's going to be a way that you're going to join me in heaven someday. Have you thought about that recently? That we get to join in heaven with God, our Father, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We get to see them in heaven, all because of a price paid in an empty tomb. So we got a lot going on this morning, but let's just spend some time entering the throne room of Jesus because we're gonna join with the, with the angels and sing praises to his name this morning. Let's praise him. Oh 
that you've done for me.
till I am dead. Praise for 
Till that stone was moved for good And the lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored
softly. You can be seated for a few moments if you'd like. We're going to give you an opportunity to, to partake in communion today. And how appropriate. I know we, we generally do it the, the first Sunday of, of the month, but when we stop and think this is, this is the perfect time, when we think about the blood of Jesus and the body and what he did for us, and the fact that he knew everything that was going to happen. He knew exactly what was going to happen. And he tried to tell the disciples so many times. He tried to tell them, there's, there's going to come a day when, when I'm not going to be here with you. And they're just like, oh, no, because they had this idea that when, that when the Messiah came, he was going to set everything, that he was going to be this general. He was going to lead them into freedom. And he was leading them into freedom, but it wasn't what they thought. And sometimes when in life, when we deal with just the situations and the struggles of life, we get this idea in our head and in our mind of what freedom from our oppression, what freedom from our situation and circumstance may be. But sometimes God's saying, I got a different way for this from you. You know, there, there's a song that they used to play. It says, sometimes he calms the storm, but sometimes he calms the child. Sometimes he calms our spirit when we're in the midst of the storm. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to do. He, he, he kept telling them and tried to, tried to get them to understand and realize what was about to happen. And they were like, oh, no. You know, it, it's like when you try to tell, tell someone and, and and they think you're joking. And you're like, no, I'm serious. And they're like, oh, yeah. And you're like, no, I'm serious. And the more you tell them you're serious, the more they think you're joking. He's like, no, seriously, this is about to happen. And so as it all portrays, we've, we've just come through Palm Sunday. And we've, we've come through where they're celebrating. And they're, they're seeing Jesus. You know, he, he's on the donkey. They're laying out the palm branches. They're thinking, this is the Messiah. He's coming. He's going to set us free. He's going to free us from the Romans. He's going to make all, he's going to wipe out all of our problems and they're all going to go away. Jesus like, not quite. This is the way it's going to happen. So what he did was he then gathered them together because he, he knew he needed a more intimate setting. And that, that's why when we do communion, there's a bit of a reverence that goes with it. It's not just, oh, you know, let's just do this just because it's something to do. No, there's a reverence that goes with it. You know, there, there's a reason we do this. And we need to remember the reason behind why we do what we do. And, and when he sat them together, because that's what they generally did, they would sit together, they would break the bread, he would bless the bread, and then he would break it, and they would, they would pass it around. And that's kind of what, what the people are doing today. They're, they're passing out the elements. Because... He wanted to have them sit down because it was a more intimate setting. So he just had the, the 12 in the room. He even sent them ahead of time said, you know, there's this guy who has this room. Tell him that I need it. And he'll say, great, and, and we'll go there. So, so that's what they did. And they went there. And I can't imagine Jesus knowing all the stuff that's going to happen in the next few days. All the stuff that he's going to have to endure. And all, all, the, all the stuff and, and that his body is going to have to endure over the next few days. He knew and understood that. I mean, how many of us, knowing what Judas was going to do, would have had invited him to the party to start with, knowing how it was going to end up? But yet he knew it was all for a purpose. There was a plan in everything that Jesus did. It was all laid out. So what he did when he got them together... And he broke the bread and he handed it out to them. And again, he's trying to tell them, this is my body that has been broken for you. And he was foretelling, now we can look back and see. And I don't know if, you, if you've ever seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ. Once you see it, you, you can't unsee what Jesus did for us. I mean, it, it, it almost makes me tear up just thinking about it. The fact that he did that for me, he gave his body to be whipped, to be scourged, knowing that my body would need healing, that, that my body would, would need things, and, and that I wasn't perfect, that I wasn't whole on myself, that I would need him and what he was about to do. And he gave of his body so that we could do this today. And he had handed it out to them, and he said, this is my body that was broken. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. 
that we didn't deserve it. There's nothing that I ever could have done to earn it. But it's not about earning. It's not about deserving. It's about love. And that's why he did it. Because he loved us so much that he gave his broken body for us. And we do this in remembrance of him. Take the bread. After the bread, he took the cup. And we know it was just wine or to this, it's just grape juice. But it's about the symbology of what it means. It's about the blood of Jesus Christ. It means no matter where we've come from, no matter what our background is, and we all have different stories. There's not a person here who doesn't have a story of something that happened in your life, of something that you've come through that God has delivered you from. But when we think about the blood that covers, that he gave his blood for us. Up until that point, there was always sacrifices of animals that had to be made, going all the way back to covering the very first sin. But he said, I have made myself a sacrifice so that you don't have to do that anymore. The sacrifice has been paid and has been paid by the blood of the spotless lamb of Jesus. We have his forgiveness in our bodies Our souls are washed clean through the blood of Jesus. And that's what this represents, the blood of Jesus. And we do this in remembrance of him. I will cling to the old. Would you do something with me? One more time, I want to sing the first verse. I heard you guys singing earlier. And there's nothing more amazing in this world than voices lifted to worship and praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So how many of you be willing to do that again? To just lift our voices and praise him together without the, the big band, without all the music, without all of that. And just worship the Lord for another minute. Would you be willing to do that? It doesn't matter to me whether you sit or whether you stand. Give it all to him. I cherish.
going to come up here in just a minute and share a wonderful testimony with you but before he does i have a word for them from the lord for someone today it may be for more it may just be for one but do you know if it's a word from the lord for one how many knows it's well worth receiving today and if it applies to you receive it if it doesn't 
uh, throw it in the trash or put it on a shelf. It matters not to me. I just want to obey the Lord. And so the Spirit of the Lord would say that there's somebody here today that's about to make a major decision. And that major decision is something that's going to affect your spiritual life. And the Spirit of God would say, pray, 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 and follow after my peace. Because if you're following the peace of your mind or your emotions, you will, you will miss the mark, says the Lord. But if you will seek my face, hear my voice, stop listening to the voice of emotions, stop listening to the voice of the flesh, but listen to my voice, be led by my spirit. You are my sons and daughters. I, I, you know my voice. A stranger you will not follow. So seek my voice and I will lead you in the right direction, says the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I'll leave it just at that. Amen. I won't add to or take it away because God knows what he's talking about. If that's you, take it and receive it and say, okay, God, I'd do that. If not, just uh, that's all right. But how many knows God knows what he's talking about? Amen. How many knows God's smarter than anybody here? Huh? Amen. Look at somebody before you sit down and say, God is good. Come on. God is, say it out loud. God is good. And you may be seated. And we've got a wonderful testimony this morning. We're going to share with you, and then we'll get right into the word of the Lord. Well, he is risen, right? Amen. It's not just some slang on a bumper sticker. He is risen. The word of God says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And I tell you what, I had a, I had a fun one this week. I almost didn't make it, but... You know what's funny? When the devil's got a plan to take you out, God's already made provision to keep you in. And my time on earth is not limited by um, what the enemy says. It's what God says. And when it's my time, it's time. And one thing out of this whole experience, and I'll get into that because everybody's like, well, what happened? Well, I'll tell you. Um, was that we always say there's time then. I've shared this with a few people that we always think at the end there's time to cry out. Well, I can live however I want. I can act like I want. I can spend my money how I want. I can do whatever I want because nobody's going to tell me what to do. But I can tell you this. In the end, there's no time. There is no time. Just that quick, I could have been gone. Now, I'm right with God, so hey, man, I'm rolling down the highway. Next, I'm rolling with Jesus, so I probably wouldn't have want to come back. I'd have been like, Lord, do I really have to go back? He would have said, yes, you do, and he did, because it's, it's my time. It's my, not my time yet. So what I had is I was driving down uh, Highway 8. It's a crazy road. A lot of you people, the folks that live over there, stop, go driving. I really don't remember all that happened. All I remember is that um, the state trooper said that I had a blowout, and one of my tires actually blew off my truck, and... Um, I went for a ride off, uh, I, I went to, I pulled a Thelma and Louise, if you ever seen that movie, it was pretty crazy, um, I went for a ride, off, and all I remember is saying, wow, this is going to be fun, and all I remember is waking up, and the EMTs are pulling me out, and it could have been gone just like that, and look, I have a broken toe, really can't, obviously you can't see, got a few bruises, keep showing up, but my truck didn't roll, didn't flip, nothing, and I walked away, literally the EMT said, can you get out of the truck, and I stepped out, just that quick. And Rick, this morning when I was um, thinking that the enemy this week has, has been hard over the past couple of weeks, we've lost some loved ones, some, some people in the church have lost some loved ones recently, and I'm sorry for that. Um, some of us have gotten bad reports from the enemy saying, we're going to take you out. But let me remind you what the word of the Lord says. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And I don't understand why these things happen. I love that truck. Trent, you posted, I was, wasn't jealous, but you posted your truck you've had for 15 years. I've had my truck for 15 years. My little favorite truck. Everybody's like, why do you still have that truck? Because I like it. I have a nicer truck at the house, whatever, and I'm driving it now. Not grudgingly, I'm like thankful for it, but I miss my little truck that I totaled. But you know what? I'm still alive and I made it. I walked away. It reminded in the Bible, says they walked away without a smell of the fire on them. I'm literally, I could have been dead. And what was interesting when I got to the ER, it's amazing how God works it off. A familiar face there. He said, I said, hi, Garrett. And one of our own here, Garrett, um, Sellers was there and took care of me. Went to church here for years, so thank you. He did a great job. I don't care what they say about Washington County Hospital. They're, they did top-notch work. They took care of me. They loved on me. Garrett was top shelf. He was just bossing like he knew what he was doing, so he appeared to me like he knew what he was doing. And all is well. And all I walked away with was with a broke toe. And out of that whole thing, I just am so thankful to the Lord because we get so busy in our lives. We're just, oh, this is just another service. We're coming to church. Okay, Jesus raised from the dead. All right, I got to get back to work Monday, pay bills. Yeah, that Jesus stuff's fine. But just that quick, when I got in my truck that day, I had no idea that that could have been it. 
So I'd encourage you, if you're doing things in your life that Jesus would never do, I would encourage you to stop and to get right. Because it could be your last moment on earth. You don't have time to cry out to God at the end. You don't. You don't. We may not be fortunate like the thief on the cross who had time and said, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. You may not have that time. So I encourage you today before this service over, and I'm sure we will, we will have an altar call. And if you don't know God or you're doing things, or maybe you've been playing games with God, you think you're fooling everybody. You may have everybody else fooled around you, but you don't have the Lord fooled because he knows, he knows all things. And I am just so thankful. Lord, I just give you the glory and the honor and praise that I'm still here today. Um, it's interesting that uh, the enemy's been really attacking the leadership of this church. And you know what I thought, Missy? One of the things, the first things that happened, I thought, Devil, you're, you, we're still here. Yeah. Try, he's trying to kill Missy. Missy's had these just a plague, a plethora of attacks from the enemy. I thought I was like doing all right. I'm like, okay, I'm healthy. I'm somewhat sane. Don't ask the people around me. They'll tell you different. But um, I've been doing okay. But then, bam, just like that, you're just minding your own business. And then the enemy, the enemy's trying to flex on me. But you know what? Jesus did the ultimate flex. He put the enemy on display 2,000 years ago, and he showed him what real power was because the enemy thought he could actually kill Jesus. But remember the master told us, Pastor, what did he say? He said, I freely lay my life down. Nobody takes it from me. He laid his life down for every single one of us here today. And you know what? He just didn't lay it down. When he was in that grave, he just didn't sit in there and think, well, it's day one's over. He wasn't sitting in there. You know what he did? It said that he descended into the heart of the earth, and he stripped the enemy of all power. And he has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he overcome death. And Paul said, oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus has overcome. So we've overcome by the blood of the lamb. And what I'm doing now, what is it? By the words of our testimony. So today I'm just going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for your protection, God. Lord, I know there's people in here hurting today, God. They've lost loved ones. We don't understand everything, God. We don't understand how these things work in this world, God. But God, you said in your word, God, your ways are higher than our ways. God, I don't understand everything, God. God, I pray for healing, God. I thank you for the supernatural healing, God, for those who are going through things, God, that don't know if they can make it yet another day, Father. But God, I know, God, that same spirit that blew you out of that grave, God, is here and is willing and able to do great and exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think or ask in this house today, Father. And I thank you, Jesus, that you've been exalted to the right hand of the Father, and you've sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to be with us here today. I pray as the word go forth, God, that people's lives be touched and changed, God. And if there's people here that don't know you, Father God, that, God, that they won't delay a second, God. Or people have gone astray, God, like that prodigal son that went away and is living in sin. God, I pray that they come home today and will confess you, God, and live a life of love for you, Jesus, because of what you did for us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's Resurrection Sunday, isn't it? Amen. I said it's Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Jesus is alive. And he went through all of that because he loves you and me. How many of us, he already had it made up in heaven, didn't he? He had it made, but God was looking for somebody that would say, I'll pay the price for the human race to be redeemed. And he said, I'll do it because I was involved in that creation process and I love mankind and I want to redeem mankind. And you know what? The almighty God, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, there are some organizations and denominations that have a problem with that, but I believe Jesus left the throne of heaven, came to this earth, humbled himself, took on the form of a servant for 33 and a half years or 33 years, and then he humbled himself even to the obedient of death, and then he rose from the dead because he loves you and me. Amen? Stand to your feet. Sing this song with us. Oh, how he loves you and me. gave his life. He gave his life. What more could he do? What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Come 
Come on, let's sing it one more time. Come on, church, lift your voice. Let's sing it out loud. Oh, how he loves you. let Easter go by without my lovely wife giving her brief testimony of what God did for her on Easter 40 years ago. Amen. You may be seated. I won't be but a minute. Oh. I got the sweetest voicemail from Gina, which is still my daughter. She was married to my son and gave me two beautiful children. And I have great children from those children. But she sent me, she had called Daryl and I both, but she left a voicemail. I had gone to sleep yesterday evening and she called and she left a voicemail and she said, I just want to thank you. Let you know that I never forget when you fought for your life and you didn't back up and you didn't quit and the impact that it had on my life. As many of you know, if you've read my book or you've heard my story, it just was a, Easter is such a, it's just such a beautiful time for all of us because it reminds us of what Jesus Christ did to, in our lives and what he wants to do. And I had, I, I was a mess, I'd had a nervous breakdown and I was in the hospital, and on that Easter, my three children, I have a picture of them, and they're standing in the corner of my, of my room, wondering if their mom was going to live or die. And that picture has such an impact when I think about it. Because it was a rough time of my life. It, I didn't know what was my next but there was a pastor in town that came over that day and he brought communion and something happened that's why communion should never been taken lightly because on that day he gave me communion and on that day I pressed in to what it meant the fact that I, Jesus loved me so much that he would give his life for me. And how dare I lay down and die? Sometimes we just want to die because that's selfish and that's the easy way out. And I had three children standing over there. I didn't know what I was going to do or how I was going to do it. But I remember on that day, that communion, the breaking of the bread, the sacrifice that he took, the stripes that he took for my healing, and the blood that he shared, that he could give his life for me. It meant something that day. And in that moment, I changed. In that moment, my perspective changed. There had been enough little road maps in the last couple of days up until Easter afternoon. But resurrection life came alive in me. I was born again Christian. I had been for a long time. I was spirit filled, but I was broken. But Jesus was broken for me. It became a revelation. 
And I would encourage every one of you that's been broken, don't take your communion lightly. Don't take what Jesus has done lightly. Many years later, in the year of 2000, right before Easter, I was in a car. I was having a stroke, didn't know what was happening to me. Had a grandson with me, ran into barrels, and there were men working on the side of the road. I could have killed them, could have killed my grandson and myself, but God helped me to get off the road. Ended up in the hospital. Within minutes, my son had me, had me to the hospital. I'd had a stroke. It was right before Sunday, and I remembered that resurrection power. I remembered what the blood of Jesus, what the broken body meant for me. I wasn't afraid. Anything that's happened to me since cancer didn't make me afraid. Everything that comes in our life, when we keep our eyes upon Jesus and we understand what he did for us, Resurrection Sunday isn't just for me. It isn't just for Luke. It isn't just for Alex last year right before Easter. God gave him such a beautiful deliverance. So many of you can remember back. You can remember times. And it could be not even close. It could be Christmas. It could be when a Savior was born. It could be any time of, of the year. We can look back, but it all points back to the cross. It all points back to that time when Jesus said, Yes, Father. Your will, not mine, be done because I can see ahead. It's the joy of Darling Rhodes ahead. It's the joy of Krissa ahead. It's the joy of every person that is sitting in this today. It's the joy I have because these are who I was created for. These are who I came to live on this earth for. These are the ones that I'm going to die for so they could have resurrected life. I love this time of year because it reminds me again and again and again, over and over, how good our God is. Announcements. That's hard after this, right? But uh, April 12th, which is just in a uh, couple of weeks, it's almost here, men's uh men's meeting from six to eight and there will be announcements going out from that our teenagers are going up to their classes and then starting on april 24th is a new class called greatness and sister edna sue will be teaching and so uh, we're excited about that uh it will be on the second and the fourth sundays you don't want to miss that uh dr sue and edna were both here this morning you know he just had knee replacement and he was here, he was ready for church, but he had forgotten to take something that he needed to take. And they had to drive all the way back. They're living in Arnold, isn't it? So they had to drive, they had to go back. But he was. they were here Wednesday night for a while, and they were here this morning. They love the house of the God, and they love you all. And so we just want uh, you to be praying for, for them and uh, new classes. They are excellent teachers. We are blessed. There is a class, the first and the third of the month. Uh, Dr. Sue, and he's very, very full of the word. And then Sister Edna Sue, and, you know, sometimes people say, why don't you have Sunday school classes? Well, we have classes, and you uh, will get a lot if you will come for those classes. If you want to know more, just check with the office. And then I have one other uh, thing I want to tell you. We have told you before, but because of conference, and didn't you enjoy conference? Yes. My goodness. <laughs> Every year you think it can't be any better, but the presence of the Lord was so strong. Our speakers were absolutely amazing. The worship team and, and tender heart, my goodness. And I believe that those that came went away refreshed. Uh, it, it was so good. Uh, Ilya and Jessica, they just said that they were so ministered to. They were so blessed. Their hearts were to so touched. And they, they feel like they received healing and rest while they were here. So we're so thankful for that. But uh, Pastor Daryl and I and um, Krista will be leaving on April the 15th. Uh, 
we will be going to conferences, and uh, we're looking forward to that. We're going to Kenya, and uh, not only are we going to be doing leadership conferences, and we're going to do women's conferences, there is actually a youth conference that Carissa is going to be speaking at. So isn't that exciting? They asked her, and I asked her, and she said yes. So we are really excited about that. So be praying with us. April the 15th, uh, uh, we will be boarding and leaving, and we will be gone about 10 days, one weekend, and we'll be back home. But pray for us. Pray ahead. Your prayers make a difference. Pastor? We get in about, uh, we get into Nairobi around midnight on Tuesday night, and we start the conference early Wednesday morning. So it's, it's a week of no rest. It's a week of constant services all day long. But it's, uh, it's our heart to be able to minister to pastors and leaders and Darlene's heart to minister to the women. And so we're going to have a great time, and we certainly do appreciate your prayers. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? How many will not be texting while I'm preaching today? I saw about 10 hands go up. All right. Thank you. Thank you. How many will uh, listen closely today and maybe learn something? You know, every Easter we hear uh, an Easter message, right? And you think, how much more can we get uh, out, out of an Easter message? Christ di died. He rose again. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's coming again. And according to some people, I heard this morning that he is coming on March or April the 9th. How many heard that? Jesus is coming on, on April the 9th because something to do with something, I don't know, the way the stars line up. But uh, if they sell a book, I'm sure they'll get rich off of that book because that's the way it works. And so uh, anyway, uh, I don't know when he's coming. No man knows the day or the hour. In fact, Jesus himself says he doesn't know the appointed time. And so but we can, we can know the seasons, but uh, uh, Jesus uh, is coming soon just like he came unexpected to the Jews back in, what year was that, zero, zero, <laughs> whatever that was. And uh, so Jesus, uh, Jesus came. He didn't come the way they expected him to, but he did come. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to speak your word today. And God, I stand here, God, in the flesh, but filled with the spirit. I stand here today, Lord, with my hope in the Lord to anoint me and to speak your word accurately. I pray, God, that you'll help us to speak it clearly. God, may our ears be open to hear the word. May we be open to change according to the word. And may we be doers of the word according to your will. Father, we thank you for, uh, for being with us in this house today. There will be no distractions. There will be no movement. We'll certainly pay close attention to what the Spirit of God is saying to the church today. And everybody said amen. Amen. I do know that there is an Easter egg hunt, and that uh, I understand that maybe somebody's going out, maybe three or four parents may be going out to help the nursery after a while, and uh, we certainly understand that. If we'd have had a little more thought into it, we'd have, we'd have prepared it for after the service, but uh, they're all excited about How many of those, it's not about the Easter eggs anyway? Huh? It's not about the Easter eggs. Amen. And so, uh, first thing I want to say is good morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mar Mark. Mark's Mark. Good morning, Carol. Good morning to all of you this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Paul and Cindy. I told Paul, I said, man, he could pass for the pastor this morning. He looks really, really sharp, and uh, he's got that tall, dignified look about him. And as you could be the, you could just be the pastor this morning. And um, he refused my offer. Um, I was going to turn it all over to him, and he said no. But uh, anyway, it's, it's just good to have all of you in the house of the Lord today. Jay, good to see you this morning. Good to have everybody here. And uh, everybody just looks amazing. I love Easter. People look amazing on Easter, don't they? And uh, we want to welcome all of those that are watching, whether you're watching. I guess right now, if you're watching live stream, you're watching on uh, Facebook. Is it later on it's posted to YouTube? Is it going live to YouTube right now? Okay, well, we thank you all for watching the, whatever media stream you're using. If you listen later on in the week to the podcast from the website, uh, we want, appreciate you watching and listening, and we pray that God will just minister to you today. How many will give me about, see, it's, it's 11.02. How many will give me about 30 to 40 minutes this morning? You, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. That doesn't mean, okay, that, that doesn't mean what you think it means, okay? It means, okay, I, I, you'll give me that. Um, you know, years ago, 
and, and, and Mark and Gary, you guys are remember this, some of you old timers. You know, we used to fill up a 90 minute cassette. <laughs> you, we filled up a 90 minute cassette. Remember that? We, we didn't feel like we had done done the message justice unless we'd filled up a 90 minute uh, a cassette tape and then then we kind of got wise and backed off to 60 minutes and we had we felt like we had to preach until we heard the click on the tape that it was over and uh, and now we've dropped it all the way down to 30 minutes one time a week but uh, you know what I think we need we need not worry about the time I've had more people in this church tell me said pastor stop worrying about the time preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's what I want to do this morning. I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk today about because he lives. Did we, we didn't even sing that this morning, did we? I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face, I want to call it anything, okay? Because he lives, I can face anything. Everybody shout anything. Good to see Cole and Crystal this morning. God bless you guys. Um, we, we can face anything that life throws our way you know I can face tomorrow I can face what the doctor told me I can face what the x-ray said I can face uh, uh, all my fears I can face any illness or sickness I can face any adversity that's planned to come my way this next week because I know he lives and because he lives in me I'm going to live through anything that comes my way say it with me because he lives I can face anything now, do you know that the empty tomb that everybody, that thousands and thousands of tourists go and visit every year, it's the only attraction where people line up to see nothing. They line up to see not, They line up to see an empty tomb. How many knows he's not there? He's not mummified. He's not wrapped up. He's not in a casket. He's not in, in some kind of a catacomb. He, he's, he's not there because we're not serving a dead Savior. It's, he's living, he's a resurrected, and he's not just living in heaven, he's living in our hearts. And so, thank God, uh, you know, we, we've said this before, and I'm going to remind you that all of human history, how many knows that uh, it's divided into B.C. and A.D., right? All of human history, because of this day, no person on the face of the earth has ever changed the dating system. And I don't care if you're an unbeliever, if you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in the Bible, you don't believe in God, every time you sign a check and every time you uh, uh, date a contract, you are admitting that 2,024 years ago, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He's the only one that could bend the date time of the universe. Thank God he rose from the dead and he's alive today. Amen? I said he's alive today. Now, I have to change something here. Uh, because I've got another thought here I want to bring to you. Study after study has proven that Christianity and church attendance is dropping. We hear different reports, you know, uh, Pew Research, uh, Barnes, uh, 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 Bar uh, Barna, Barna Research, and all those Gallup different polls. Uh, we're, we're finding out that church attendance is declining. Religiosity, I don't like that word, but really, religiosity is, is, is in, a, in a horrible decline. Church attendance is in a decline. And what's interesting is even though church attendance is in decline, how many of those depression is rising? How many of those Prozac is rising? Suicide is rising. Fear is rising. So many people today seeking therapy... In the midst of knowing that we have a Savior that's going to help us through anything that comes our way. And so we see all this, we see this thing declining, but we see the fear of man increasing more and more. And uh, it, I, I, I want to tell you something. I don't know how many remember this song, but, uh, and, and you're going to date yourself if you do. But looking for love in all the wrong places. You remember that What's that song? Well, that's not just a song, folks. That's what people are doing today. We're looking for love in all the wrong places. We're looking for acceptance in all the wrong places. We're looking for approval from all the wrong places. Well, if just my boss would notice me, he might give me a raise. Or, or if somebody would show me a little appreciation. Uh, if somebody would just, just recognize how good I've done. Listen, I want to tell you something. Uh, we've got to go back. We as believers have got to go back to the very first commandment that God gave to Moses and here's what it was I am the Lord thy God do not have any strange gods before me we're asking why is the world such a mess 
Why is everything so upside down? Why is everything falling apart? And the very first commandment says, don't have any other gods before me. You see, what we've happened, what's happened is we have forgotten God. I said we have forgotten God. We have forgotten who God is. We have forgotten what God has done. And because we have forgotten God, how many of those things have fallen apart? If you were here Wednesday night, I would encourage uh, If you weren't here Wednesday night, I would encourage you, go home and YouTube a search on Jonathan um, uh, Kahn, C-A-H-N, and, and, and put in there uh, A-C-T-S, Acts. And watch that video that we showed here Wednesday night because he's going to tell us and he's explained to us how in the world this, why this world is falling apart. Because we've kicked God out of society. We've kicked him out of our culture. And any, any, cult, any culture that kicks God out is going to head to doom. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. That's Jonathan Kahn and Acts. Look it up and you will be blessed by that. But we're looking, we're looking for God in all the wrong places. We're looking for thrills in all the wrong places. We're looking for fulfillment in all of the wrong places. Somebody said, well, you know, I work very hard. I'm proud of who I am. I'm, I, I'm a self-made man. I've, I've risen to the other side of the tracks. I'm now on the east side. I'm living up on the east side. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I don't need help because I can do it all by myself. And that's the problem with humanity. We don't need God. We can do it ourselves. I can make a ton of money without God. I can, I can take care of my body and be healthy without God. I can, I can have peace without God. Listen, that's the problem with our culture in America. I, I'm not speaking for the other nations. But our culture is very evident that we put putting God on the back shelf. We can't do it by ourselves. I said, we can't do it by ourselves. In fact, if you'll stop and think about it for just a minute, we're all in a 12-step program. Tracy here this morning? Where's Tracy? We're, we're all, yeah, okay, you're back there. We're all in a 12-step program. Amen. You know what the first step is? We've got to admit we need help. That's the first step. We have to admit I can't do it by myself. What happens when we do it by ourselves? It ends up becoming chaos. It becomes a mess. Amen. Listen, God is in charge. And like it or not, you can't take your next breath without him. You can't take your next step without him. You won't get a good night's sleep without him. The problem is sometimes we think it all depends on us. I, 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 and we have become our, our own gods. And no wonder the world is depressed. No wonder society is a mess. No wonder the psychic couches are, uh, the, not the psychic, the psychiatrist couches are full every day of the week because people are trying to find help in all the wrong places, looking for love in all the wrong places. We've got to return to God. Man, we're a, we're a pill-popping generation. We're a, a drug-taking, we're a drug place. Man, listen, folks, listen. It's all because he is no longer our Lord and God. But that's about to change for some people today. Did you hear me? That's about to change for some people today. There's going to be some people come to Jesus. So where is Jesus today? You say, I've got to find him. Where is Jesus? Well, I'll tell you where he is not. He's not in the tomb. He is not in Jerusalem. Amen? How many knows when, when, when Mary needed him? When Mary needed him, listen to what he said. He said, you don't have to go through life being afraid of anymore. Remember, Mary had all those demons cast out of her, and she was so full of fear and darkness and, and uh, evilness, and, and Jesus spoke delivered her and now you don't have to be afraid anymore you know what he said to peter oh, i like this hey buddy you don't have to go through feeling ashamed and guilty anymore i'll give you the scripture in just a moment you know what he said to thomas hey tommy you don't have to be afraid anymore you don't have to to uh, stay curled up in a fetal position with a pacifier in your mouth i've come that you might have life more abundantly and because i live you don't have to doubt anymore everybody needs hope Everybody needs hope. You know what? Those people that don't even want to go to church on Easter, they still need hope. We all need help. Do you know the first Easter wasn't, Jesus didn't come to the, the, the first Easter service to a bunch of well-dressed, dignified, successful people. You know who he came to? He knew he showed himself, showed himself to? Those disciples that were in fear and trembling, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to do next, didn't know where to go. They were a confused bunch of guys. That's who Jesus appeared to on Easter, and uh, that's, that's who he came for, a bunch of confused people. And he's still here, helping our confused minds. Amen. We've all, we've all heard, everybody, heard somebody say at one time or another, well, I'm at the end of my rope. 
or they're at the end. Maybe you haven't said it, but you've heard other people. They're at the end of their rope. You know what that, that means? That means they have no more endurance. They have no more patience. They have no more strength. They have no more energy. I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know what to do. I've, uh, I'm at the end. It also means we have no more hope. I'm at the end of my rope. I have no hope. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, don't it? What do we mean when we say we've reached the end of our rope or our hope? What, what is hope anyway? Well, I, 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 I hope the Cardinals win more games this year than they did last year. Uh, I, really, I really hope the teacher doesn't give us any homework assignments this week. I really hope I get a raise this year. That's not the kind of hope I'm talking about. I'm talking about a living hope in a person. Can I hear an amen today? How, and how many believes that Jesus can give us hope? We can have hope for a better future. There is such a thing as real hope. And I'd appreciate it if somebody helped me preach this morning and say amen once in a while. Jesus says, I've come to give you hope. Hope for the future. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for your situation. Amen. Peter, Peter calls him a living hope. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there is such a thing as real hope because real hope is found in a real person. It's not a thing. Hope is a person. Somebody shout amen. amen. Because he lives, I have hope. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I don't fall apart when the doctor says, you have this illness. When the doctor told my wife, you have cancer, her response was, I believe all is well. I believe all is well. I was with her. I was right there through the test. I was right there when they brought the results of the test. She didn't cry and fall apart. She didn't fall to the floor and say, what am I going to do? She said, I believe all is well. And she didn't stutter. Number two, hope is a gift from God. It's a source of strength. It's a source of courage in the face of our harshest, most troublesome trials we may ever feel. Uh, and I know sometimes, and we've all felt this way. We've all felt like we were trapped maybe in a tunnel of misery or trapped in a cage of fear. We've all felt that. Rick, I know, I know what you're saying, brother. Man, when, when you got that report, Rob, when you got that report, Avery, good morning to you, Avery, and your beautiful bride. Uh, you know, you guys got that report, you know, and, and I've talked to some other people recently that just got the report. They just found out. But you know what? Instead of falling apart, we need to fall on our face to Jesus. Amen. And I so appreciate these two men, man. They turned it over to God. They didn't fall apart. They turned it over to God. And they went, they went through. They got treatment. But now they're made whole and now the doctors come back and said something else about Rick but Rick all is well we didn't believe the first report we're not going to believe the second report it may be there but God says I'll take care of it have no fear Rick have no fear amen so uh, you know it, whether you're struggling with a crippling disease or a lingering illness I believe that hope in Jesus will preserve our lives amen when you find yourself unemployed just remember there's hope in jesus amen when you see missy walk off the stage and she looks weak and like she's about to fall over i want to remind all of you she has hope in christ you hear me she has hope Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Missy this morning. We know that her hope is in you. We know that her strength is in you. We know that her healing is in you. And God, she does not waver. She's strong in the faith. God, her mouth declares that she is the healed. Her tongue declares she is the, the righteousness of God and healed by the stripes of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you for the hope, the true hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. When you feel rejected, when you feel abandoned, there is a hope that you can have in Christ Jesus that I am not alone. My wife woke up one morning and everything was taken away from her. The house that she had lived in, the, 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 the touring bus that they, that they owned, everything was taken from her. She woke up without a job and three children to take care of. But you know what? She didn't give up. She didn't quit. And that's why I love to hear that testimony every year. You may get tired of it, but it brings me to tears every time I hear that testimony of what God did for her on that Easter Sunday morning. Rose her, Rose her, 
raised her, thank you, raised her up, pointed her to Farmington and married the greatest guy in the world and life has never been the same. <laughs> when you feel abandoned, you feel rejected, listen, I believe that we're going to make it. I believe you're going to make it. Does life ever hurt? Of course life hurts. Has Darlene and I ever been faced with, with a situation of uh, we need hope? Why, yeah, there, there's times that we wonder, God, where's, when's the dream that you gave us coming to pass? And, and I heard people say, well, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. How you doing? Well, I'm living the dream. Well, I haven't arrived to the dream yet, but I'm enjoying the journey. I haven't seen everything that God promised come to pass, but I'm enjoying the journey. And I'll be hanged if I'm going to get discouraged on the journey to the victory that God's got planned for me, to the dream that God's got planned for me, to the, to the, the, the things that God has planned for this ministry. We've said for years, years, we will have a mortgage-burning service at Solid Rock. Bonnie, where are you at back there? Bonnie, how many years? We've said that for a lot of years. Can you shout amen a little louder? It's about as loud as she can get right now. But, but I, and I just, I, you know, we've been saying that for years and years and years. And, you know, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. We may see it this year. And if not this year, we will see it next year. So you better bring your shouting shoes because we're going to have a big old something up here to burn that mortgage with. Or at least a copy of the mortgage, right? So uh, God is faithful. God is good. We've been paying on this place for 40 years. It's about time it get paid for, right? Glory to God. Okay. You know, there, without hope, if you don't have hope, man, it's, it's something how marriage partners will turn to divorce because they feel like I have no hope. I have no hope with my husband. And uh, how many times, how many times you, I, and I've, I've seen a few suicide notes, but you know, how many times do you see no hope in a suicide note? It's all gone. It's all over with. Well, this is Sunday morning. I guess we ought to read the Bible. So go with me to the book of Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 and verse 54. I am reading from the NLT, which is my favorite version right now. I don't use it for doctrine or theology, but I do use it for explaining in down-to-earth terms. So I'm looking for Luke 22, verse 54 through 62. When you're ready, shout amen. amen. If you're still looking, say, oh, help me. If you haven't found it now, there will be no hope. Look behind me. <laughs> so, so they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them there. That's his first mistake. He joined the wrong crowd. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, This must be one of them because he's a Galilean also. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will have denied me three times, denied that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Do you know that his commitment that I'll never leave you or forsake you, uh, Lord, I'll never, I'll go to jail for you, whatever it takes. Uh, how many knows his, commit, his commitment was tested? I said his commitment was put to the test. He said, this man, Peter was a stubborn guy. Peter was a, a determined follower of Christ. I mean, he didn't know any bounds. He, he was willing to cut off the ear of the guy that was coming to arrest Jesus. I mean, this guy was one committed dude. But Jesus reminded him that Satan is after you. Satan wants to uh, sift you as fine wheat. Remember that? Uh, uh, say it like this. Satan has been working overtime to get you. And there's some of you in this house today that you, you're feeling things that you haven't felt in a long time. You're feeling attacks like you haven't felt in a long time. And, and, and uh, you've you got to be reminded that the devil's working overtime to trip you up. But remember this. Jesus says, I have prayed for you. Jesus intercedes for us. Luke 22, 31 through 34. 
Simon, stay on your toes. This is from the message Bible. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you from me like chaff from wheat. Simon, I've prayed for you in particular that you not give in or give out. When you've come through the time of testing, turn to your companions and give them a fresh start. Peter said, Master, I'm ready to do anything with you. I'd go to jail for you. I'd die for you. And I can just hear, hear Jesus saying, yeah, 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 I'm not buying that story. Jesus said, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Peter, but before the rooster crows, you would have three times denied that you even know me. And how many knows that very night, that very night, the words of Jesus turned into reality. Peter failed the Lord. Now, don't look so righteous. Don't look so spiritual because every one of us have failed the Lord at one time or another. We don't plan it. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, you know, put it on our calendars. We don't put it in our date book. We don't think, well, I, I think I'll fail the Lord this Monday afternoon. No, but we've all failed God, haven't we? We've all, we've all failed him. But de Peter deliberately opened his mouth and denied that he knew the Christ. And he was not one of the 12. Not one time, not two times, but three times. And Gabe, they were all three back to back. One, two, three, just like that. He denied the Lord. Now Peter's no longer strong. Peter's no longer loyal. Now Peter becomes weak. Peter now uh, is, is uh, he went from being courageous and committed to being weak. He sobs. He cries. He's full of guilt. He's full of shame. And he plunges to rock bottom. And he's caught in the grip of hopelessness. Some of you may be there right now. You feel like it's a hopeless situation. I'll never overcome this battle in my mind. I'll never overcome this, these lustful thoughts. I'll never be able to overcome pornography. I'll never be able to overcome lying. I'll never be able to overcome my, my attitude. I'll never be able to overcome this, that, or the other. Listen, folks, listen to me. God gave Peter a chance, and he wants to give you another opportunity as well. Come on, say amen. amen. Peter had hope beyond What he ever thought he'd have. It, and he thought, he thought his hope was gone forever. But do you remember that first Easter Sunday morning? Everybody shout Easter Sunday. Do you remember that first Easter Sunday? We read that Jesus had been resurrected from the grave, from the dead. We hear this great words of grace. Go tell my disciples and what? And Peter. Go tell my disciples and Peter that I'm alive. In other words, Peter didn't feel like he deserved to be called a disciple anymore. He failed God. He's full of shame, full of guilt. But Jesus spoke it out in out loud language. Go tell my disciples and Peter. And you know that old fisherman's life was turned around at that very moment once again. And uh, thank God he needed to recover from failure. And he did recover from failure. He got hope from failure. And uh, he, in fact, Peter would go on and be the one that started the very first New Testament church in Jerusalem. And he was the pastor of that church. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. My 20 minutes is gone. So I have about less than 20 more. I'm going to make it. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Peter 1 and 18. Your life is a journey. You must travel with a deep conscious of God, consciousness of God. It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. Oh, I like that, don't you? It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood. He died like an, like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought. Even though it had only happened lately, at the end of the ages became public knowledge. God always knew what he was going to do, and he was going to do this for you. It's because of this sacrificed Messiah, whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God and that you know you have a future in God. I love that. you got a future in God. I don't know if that does anything for you or not, but that, that sure blesses me. Every once in a while, I said a while ago that Darnay and I, sometimes we may find our place uh, in a position where, where we have no hope, things are falling apart, and it has happened over the years. Uh, but, but, you know, we, you, you press on. You don't quit. Amen? You, you, you press on. I, I, I don't say this braggingly, and I, I'm certainly probably a glutton for punishment, but I'm the only pastor in this area uh, that I know of that has pastored the same church for 48 years. 
I know I'm the only one in, in Pentecostal Church of God, Southern Missouri, 48 years. And you know, there's been many, many times that we wanted to quit. I won't go into all the reasons why, but you know what we did? We had to stay focused. You've got to stay focused. You see, you know, there was a word for somebody a while ago that, that you're, about, you're about to make a decision that may cost you some, cost you your, your, some, your, your, your walk, not your walk with God, but maybe your, your spiritual maturity or something. But, but uh, how many knows it's important to stay focused? It's important to keep your eyes on the Word of God. It's, your, it's important to listen to God. Amen? And uh, we, need, we need that hope that, you know what? I will see my dreams fulfilled. I will see this church paid off. I will see. The devil's not going to snatch my life before I see this church paid off. And, Bonnie, I heard there was a word went out over you that said, you're going to live until you see the church paid off. That don't mean you have to kick the bucket afterwards, but you're going to see it happen, Okay? Everybody say this with me. I have hope beyond failure. I have hope beyond guilt. Say it out loud. I have hope beyond suffering. I have hope beyond division. I have hope beyond bitterness. I have hope beyond misery. I can go on if you want me to. 1 Peter 1, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5 in the Message Bible. What a God we have. How fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master, Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life, a living hope, and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. Hey, I'm not living just to go to heaven. I'm not living for God just to get a change of address. I am living for God because, man, I'm enjoying life today. And if you're not enjoying life today, you're not living life to the fullest. I don't mean that everything's going just real smooth for you, but you know that everything's going to be all right. Listen, you're missing the mark. I've got a brand new, I mean, I do have a future in heaven. But I thank God today I've got life. Today I've got life. The day is coming when you'll have it all. Life healed and whole. Look at John chapter 20. Verses 1 and 2. Early in the morning on the first day of the week while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to, to uh, Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, speaking of John, breathlessly panting. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. And then chapter 20, verse 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. Listen. Mary thought all hope was gone. She could do nothing but cry. She could do nothing but fall apart. Now, at one time, her life was full of despair. At one time, her, heart, her life was full of darkness and full of evil. But now listen, Jesus came and delivered her and set her free uh, just a few years before that, two or three years before that. And, and she was a victim of this demonic activity that was reigning in her life. And her future was bleak. But Jesus came to give her hope. Jesus changed her life. And when she stood in front that day and said, I don't know where he at. Somebody's taken him away. I want to tell you something. Jesus still had given Mary a future and given her a hope. And now all of a sudden she's grieved and despair. And we change so quickly, don't we? And the reason we change so quickly is because we've left the word. We've left the promise. We left the prophecy. We left what Jesus told us five years ago, six years ago, six months ago. We forgot what the Lord has said. And now we're living in grief and sorrow. But listen, I got a feeling if you just hang on, everything's going to turn out okay. Amen. Mark 16 and 6. He said unto them, Be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. This is the place where they laid him, but he's not here. Looking for Jesus in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong places. I wonder if there's people here today that's trying to find peace in life, trying to find joy, trying to find fulfillment trying to find something that you don't have and you're looking in the wrong places he's not here he is risen this is where they laid him but he's not here they're looking in the wrong places where are you looking today what are you what are you looking for 
What, what is it that you're lacking in your life that you're looking for something else besides Jesus to fulfill? He's the only way. He's the only way. He's the truth. He's the life. You won't find it. I was thinking on the way to church this morning about my neighbor. And I, I want to I want to approach my neighbor sometime and, and just, just ask him, what do you think happens when you die? Because, you know, people that don't believe in the Bible, people that don't believe in God, people, people that have no spiritual life at all, you wonder, what, what do they think happens when you die? Do you think you just go into the grave and that's the end of the story? Or uh, do, do, do you uh, think, well, maybe I am a three-part human being, maybe I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I do live in a body? If I do, where's, where's, what's, how do you separate the three? Where, where, where are they going when I die? Well, I've done a few funerals this last couple of weeks. I've got another one this next week. And you know what? That body goes into the six-foot ground, six-foot grave. That body goes there. But I'm going to tell you something. Those that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. How do you tell somebody that doesn't believe, somebody that doesn't understand or, or even care to know the Bible? How do you tell them that Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, if you even, though, even though you die, you still live. Even though we Go into the grave. We're still alive. Amen. We're still alive. She, her, her focus was on an empty tomb. Her focus, focus was on a missing body. Three of the greatest words that you'll ever hear is, He is risen. He is risen. And there's something about, about that Friday. Was, was, Friday was one of the greatest days of the year, but how many know Sunday was the, the greatest day of the year? How many knows he had to die before he could be raised from the dead? He had to give up his life. I'm going to tell you something. Those Romans think they took his life. They're the instrument that was used to, to beat him and to crucify him, but he gave up his life. Nobody takes the life of Jesus. He gave it up. For you and you and you. He gave it all up just for you. He is risen and that's what marks christianity as the greatest of all faiths because we are serving a risen savior he was he is and he will forever be amen i close with this scripture would you stand to your feet as we read this scripture as i read this scripture i want you to examine your heart as the as the worship team comes forward i want you to examine your life and ask yourself Am I right with God today? Have I been looking in all the wrong places for peace? Am I, am I looking for, oh, if I just had a new house, or if I just had a new car, if I just had a new wife. Honey, it don't work that way. Hello? If I, if I, just, if I just could go on vacation. You know, every time you go on vacation, how many knows you come back home, right? You might leave the mess for a while, but you're coming back home to the mess. Looking for love, looking for God in all the wrong places. Where was it in the Bible? They said, I think it was David said, if I go to the mountains and if I go to the valley, God's everywhere. I can, you know, he's, he's everywhere I go. But we got people that are looking for God in fleshly things, in, in, in uh, soulish things, in, in uh, emotional things. Now listen to this. I want you to examine your life while I'm reading this verse. Listen closely. But tell me this. Since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you still saying there is no resurrection? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And your Sunday morning attendance is useless. And your tithing is useless. And you're, you're, you're coming to Wednesday night. It's useless. If Jesus Christ is not, this is the foundation of our faith. This is why we do what we do. If not, we're no different than any other religion of the world. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave, but that can't be true if there's no resurrection of the dead. 
this is a great scripture to use at a graveside service. And I've used it many a times. That that person that we're putting in the grave, that body, that, that building, that envelope that we're putting in the grave is going to rise again. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. Does that just blow your mind? It hinges. It all hinges on Christ being raised from the dead. If he wasn't raised from the dead, you can forget about going to heaven because you won't be raised either, right? And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of all your sins. In that case, all of those who died believing, Christ, believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are to be more pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. I love that. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. It's a fact. It's a fact. He is the first of a great harvest of all those who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. That ought to make you a little excited this morning. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest, then all we who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. Ladies and gentlemen, he was the first fruit, but you're the second fruit, and the third fruit, and the fourth fruit. And the, he was the firstborn, but we're one of many born of the Lord. And because he arose, we have so much more to look forward to than just the few years we have left on this earth. I'm 74 years old. I expect, I expect I'll live probably to, I, well, I don't want to put a date on it, but, but I'm going to live a long time. But when my time comes, and they put me in the ground. Don't feel sorry for me. Don't, don't, I don't want any tears around. Gary told me the other day, he said, now my, he said, Daryl, you're gonna do my funeral. And he said, I don't want any tears. I don't want any sad songs. I want a church service because I'm not there anyway. I'm in heaven. Why, why cry if I'm in heaven? So, because he rose, you see, the whole Easter message is he is risen. You say, Pastor, I come to church every Easter and I hear the same message. Yes, because that's the foundation of everything we do in life. If he's not risen, we're of all men most miserable. This morning, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you don't have that promise of being raised from the grave to spend eternity with the Lord in heaven. In fact, the Bible says that those who die outside of Christ that don't know him will suffer eternal punishment. You think this world is hell? This world is the only heaven that some people is going to know. But to us that are believers, this world will be the only hell we know. Because we're going to heaven. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you ready to meet the master? Brother Luke brought it out so clearly a while ago. When he said the thief on the cross had time to repent. But do you know you could be snatched out so fast that you don't even have time to say, Jesus, help me. You won't, you could be, you, do you know people die of heart attacks every day? So fast, so suddenly. They don't have time to say, Lord, help me. They're here and gone, here and gone. And if you're banking on the fact that, well, when I die, I'll, I'll have a few minutes to pray and get forgiveness, you don't have that guarantee. So I would, have, I would advise, my suggestion is, let's give our life to Christ today while we're living. Enjoy the rest of the life that we have here on this earth. And then go to be with the Lord when we, get, when we become absent in the body. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please, for just one moment. If you're in this house today and Jesus Christ is not your Lord, you have not asked Jesus into your heart, you are not born again. Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. He's the only way to heaven. He's the only way to the Father. You say, Pastor, I, I just don't I'm, not, I don't, I'm not interested in buying that life insurance policy. I'm not trying to sell you a life insurance policy. I'm trying to give you life today. I'm trying to give you the life that Jesus came to give you. 
I'm not saved to escape hell. I'm saved because I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning, if you're not a Christian today, if you've never received Jesus Christ, or maybe you did receive, but you just, you just went your own way, lived your own lifestyle, and, and like the prodigal son, just went out and did your own thing, and maybe today you need to come home. Maybe the day, today's the day that you need to say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. No more longer word to be called your son. Just make me a servant. And I can hear the Father say, oh, no. Come on home, my child. You're still my son. Let me put the ring on your finger. Let me put shoes on your feet. Let's kill the fatted calf. Let's have a party because my son that was lost is coming home today. That's how Jesus feels about you returning. This morning, I want to see the hands of everybody in this building that would say, just, just raise your hand. By raising your hand, you're saying, Pastor Rhodes, I have not given my life to Jesus. Jesus is not my Lord. I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. Let me see your hand real quickly. You're in this building. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? I'm not a Christian. I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't understand it all. I don't even understand everything you said today. But in my heart, there's a knocking on my heart's door, and I want to give my life to Jesus today. Come on, I know there's more in this building today. I know there's more, and I'm not going to beg anybody, but I will give you one more opportunity to raise your hand and say, Jesus, come into my life. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I pray for every person that's raised their, head, their hand in this building today. God, they have basically confessed with their hand that they do not know you. But you said in your word, if we'll confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. Thank you, Father, for the simplicity of salvation. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those of you this morning that raised your hand. Three or four people raised your hand. If, if you didn't raise your hand and you want to come on down, I want you to come down here. I'm going to ask Alex and Dara and Luke to come down here and just stand with us in the front this morning. And we want, we want them to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you raised your hand, would you be man or woman enough to come on down and let these men and women pray with you today? Would you do that? Come on. Anybody else? Come on. I know you raised your hand. You know who you are. I'll not embarrass you, but if you raise your hand, today's your day. Don't put it off. You don't have the promise. You don't have the promise of tomorrow. Anybody else? All right. All right. Dwayne, take us. Take us to the heavenly of heavens. Okay, go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Oh, I see the Lord and his train filled. The temple I see the Lord He is high and lifted up Oh, I see the Lord And His train fell Temple. I see the Lord, He is high and lifted up, and angels cry. Angels cry, holy, holy is the Lord. I see the Lord, and his eyes are flaming like fire. the Lord and his hair is white as snow and 
and angels cry Holy, holy is the Lord Angels cry Holy, holy is the The angel came and touched the coal to my lips. And now my guilt is gone, and my sin has been forgiven. Come on, church, let's lift our voice. Sing the song of heaven. Holy is the Lord. And I cry. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, is, the holy Lord. is the Lord. Come on, sing it again. I cried, holy. And I Father, we thank you for the celebration of this Sunday, but not only Sundays only, but the daily celebrations we have, knowing that Jesus Christ has risen from the grave, to know that he is in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, even interceding and praying for us. Father, I thank you that you have given all men an opportunity to know you through the shed blood, through the death, and through the resurrection that you have done, Jesus. I thank you. Thank you for being willing to pay the price to redeem this human race that will receive you. Now, Father, I pray your blessings upon every person in this building. God, as they exit this house today, I pray that they will be filled with the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. They'll be filled with the wisdom of God and the direction that they need for this next week. Decisions will be made. God, there's going to be there's going to be opportunities, Lord, that, that you will give us to share our faith with others. May we be quick. May we be ready to share our faith. I thank you, Lord, for healing. God, I thank you that this week your divine hand will keep your people protected from danger and harm and evil. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we know that there, the war is now escalated and it's now... Lebanon that's shooting those rockets and we pray God for protection for those people Lord that are suffering the fallout Lord may you just protect those people of Israel in the name of Jesus Father we thank you for Ilya and Jessica and her mother and father that are ministering to the soldiers to those that are being struck down thank you Father for using them Father we pray that Putin's war on Ukraine will fail. We pray, Father God, for protection for Ukraine. We pray for peace, Lord. We pray for supernatural peace. You said in your word that your peace you give unto us. You even said in Galatians that one of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. Thank you, Father, for your peace that passes all understanding. We bless you today. I thank you for a good week. May the blessings of the Lord overtake in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Tim, I didn't know that was you standing back there until just now. I just looked back there and saw you. God bless you and your whole family or a part, most of your family there. It's good to have you with us today. God bless you. TJ, good to see you. If this is your first Sunday, we welcome you to Solid Rock. And we're thankful to God that you are here with us today. May the Lord bless you. 
And uh, may you have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Be strong, be healthy, and be full of the joy of the Lord. God bless you.